Chapter Nine, Part Two of Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book One, by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Reverend Philip Edward Pusey. And the world was made by him the evangelist in these words needfully indicates that the world was made through the very light that is the only begotten for although having called him most distinctly word at the beginning he affirmed that all things were made through him and that without him nothing was brought into being and demonstrated thereby that he was their maker and creator yet it was necessary now most particularly to take this up again anew that no room of error and perdition might be left to those who are wont to pervert the uprightness of the divine dogmas for when he said of the light that it was in the world that no one resting the saying to senseless conceptions should make the light conumerate with the visible portions of the universe as sun and moon and stars for example are in the world but as parts of the universe and as limbs of one body profitably and of necessity does the evangelist introduce the only begotten as fashioner and artificer of the whole universe and thereby again fully establishes us and leads us into an unerring and right apprehension of the truth for who would be so silly or have such great folly in his mind as not to conceive that wholly other than the universe is he through whom it is said to have been made and to put the creature in its own place to sever off the creator in reasoning and to conceive that his nature is divine for the thing made must needs be other in nature than the maker that maker and maid appear not the same for if they be conceived of as the same without any inherent distinction as to the mode of being the maid will mount up to the nature of the maker the creator descend to that of the creatures and will no longer have alone the power of bringing into being but this will be found to exist in potential in things made also if nothing at all severs them from being consubstantial with god and so at length the creature will be its own creator and the evangelist will endow the only begotten with a mere title of honour when he says that he was in the world and the world was made by him but he knows that the creator of all things is one in nature not as the same then will maid and maker god and creature be conceived of by those who know how to believe aright but the one will be subject as a bondman acknowledging the limit of its own nature the son will reign over it having alone with the father the power both to call things which be not as though they were and by his ineffable power to bring that which is not yet into being but that the son being by nature god is wholly other than the creature we having already sufficiently gone through in the discourse of the holy trinity will say nothing more here but we will add this for profit that in saying that the world was made through him he brings us up to the thought of the father and with the through home brings in also the of home for all things are from the father through the son in the holy ghost and the world knew him not the bearer of the spirit is watchful and hastens to forestall the sophistry of some and you may marvel again at the reasoning in his thoughts he named the sun very light and affirmed that he lighteth every man that cometh into the world 
and besides says that he was in the world and the world was made through him but one of our opponents might forthwith say if the word sirs were light and if it lighted the heart of every man unto divine knowledge that is and unto the understanding that befits man and if it were always in the world and were himself its maker how came he to be unknown even during so long periods he therefore was not lighting nor yet was he at all the light these things the divine meets with some warmth saying the world knew him not not on his own account was he unknown says he but let the world blame its own weakness for the sun lighteth the creature blunts the grace it had imparted to its sight to conceive of him who is god by nature and it squandered the gift it made things made the limit of its contemplation it shrank from going further it buried the illumination under its negligence it neglected the gift which that it might not befall him paul commands his disciple to watch not then to the light is the ill of the enlightened for as the light of the sun rises upon all but the blind is nothing profited yet we do not therefore reasonably blame the sun's ray but rather find fault with the disease of the sight for the one was lighting the other received not the lighting so i deem ought we to conceive of the only begotten also that he is very light but the god of this world as paul too saith hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the knowledge of god should shine among them we say then that the man was subjected to blindness herein not that he reached a total deprivation of light for the god-given understanding is surely preserved in his nature but that he was quenching it with his more foolish manner of life and that by turning aside to the worse he was wasting and melting away the measure of the grace wherefore the most wise psalmist too when representing to us the character of such an one then indeed and rightly begs to be enlightened saying to god open thou mine eyes that i may behold wondrous things out of thy law for he gave them the law to be their help which rekindled in us the divine light and purged away like a sort of humour from the eyes of the heart the darkness which came upon them from the ancient unlearning the world then is under the charge of unthankfulness alike and want of perception in this matter both as ignorant of its own creator and showing forth no good fruit from being lighted that that again may be manifestly true of it which was sung by the prophet's voice of the children of israel i looked that it should bring forth grapes but it brought forth thorns for the fruit of being enlightened is verily the true apprehension of the only begotten hanging like a grape bunch from the vine branch i mean man's understanding and not on the contrary the uncounsel that leads to polytheistic error like the sharp briar rising up within us and wounding to death our mind with its deceits eleven he came unto his own and his own received him not the evangelist pursues his plea that the world knew not its illuminer that is the only begotten and from the worst sin of the children of israel he hastens to clench the charges against the gentiles and shows the disease of ignorance alike and unbelief which lay upon the whole world very appositely does he drive forward to discourse of the incarnation and from speaking of the godhead he comes down by degrees to the exposition of the dispensation with flesh which the son made for our sakes for it were no marvel if the world knew not says he the only begotten seeing that it had left the understanding that befits man and was ignorant that it is and was made in honour and compared to the beasts that perish 
as the divine psalmist also said when the very people who were supposed above all to belong to him shook him off when present with the flesh and would not receive him when he came among them for salvation to all recompensing to faith the kingdom of heaven but observe how exact is his language about these things for the world he accuses of not at all knowing him who lighteth it elaborating for it a pardon so to speak just on this account and preparing beforehand reasonable causes for the grace given to it but of those of israel who were reckoned among those specially belonging to him he says received him not for it would not have been true to say knew him not when the older law preached him the prophets who came after led them by the hand to the apprehension of the truth the sentence therefore of severity upon them was just even as the goodness too upon the gentiles for the world or the gentiles having lost their relation with god through their downfall into evil lost besides the knowledge of him who enlighteneth them but the others who were rich in knowledge through the law and called to a polity pleasing to god were at length voluntarily falling away from it not receiving the word of god who was already known to them and who came among them as to his own for the whole world is god's own in regard of its creation and its being brought into being from him and through him but israel will more fitly be called his own and will gain the glory hereof both on account of the election of the holy fathers and for that he was named the beginning and the firstborn of the children of god for israel is my son my firstborn says god somewhere to moses whom also setting apart for himself as one and picked out he was wont to call his own people saying to pharaoh king of egypt let my people go proof from the books of moses also shows that israel specially pertains unto god for when it says the most high was dividing the nations when he was separating the sons of adam he set the bounds of the nations according to the member of the angels of god and his people jacob became the lord's portion israel the lot of his inheritance among whom he also walked as in his own lot and special portion saying i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel but when he was not received he transfers the grace to the gentiles and the world which knew him not at the beginning is lighted through repentance and faith and israel returns to the darkness whence he had come forth wherefore the saviour too saith for judgment i am come into this world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind twelve but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god to them that believe on his name a right judgment verily and worthy of god the first-born israel is cast out for he would not abide in ownness with god nor did he receive the son who came among his own he rejected the bestower of nobility he thrust away the giver of grace the gentiles received him by faith therefore will israel with reason receive the wages of their folly they will mourn the loss of good things they will receive the bitter fruit of their own ill counsel bereft of the sonship and the gentiles will delight themselves in the good things that are through faith they shall find the bright rewards of their obedience and shall be planted out in his place for they shall be cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and be grafted contrary to nature into the good olive tree and israel shall hear ah sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evil-doers 
children that are corruptors they have forsaken the lord they have provoked the holy one of israel unto anger but one of christ's disciples shall say to the gentiles but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye would show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light for since they received the son through faith they received the power to be ranked among the sons of god for the son gives what is his alone and specially and of nature to be in their power setting it forth as common making this a sort of image of the love for man that is inherent to him and of his love for the world for in none other way could we who bore the image of the earthy escape corruption unless the beauty of the image of the heavenly were impressed upon us through our being called to sonship for being partakers of him through the spirit we were sealed unto likeness with him and mount up to the primal character of the image after which the divine scripture says we were made for thus hardly recovering the pristine beauty of our nature and reformed unto that divine nature shall we be superior to the ills that have befallen us through the transgression therefore we mount up unto dignity above our nature for christ's sake and we too shall be sons of god not like him in exactitude but by grace in imitation of him for he is very son existing from the father we adopted by his kindness through grace receiving i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high for the created and subject nature is called to what is above nature by the mere nod and will of the father but the son and god and lord will not possess this being god and son by the will of god the father nor in that he wills it only but beaming forth of the very essence of the father he receives to himself by nature what is its own good and again he is clearly seen to be very son proved by comparison with ourselves for since that which is by nature has another mode of being from that which is by adoption and that which is in truth from that which is by imitation and we are called sons of god by adoption and imitation hence he is son by nature and in truth to whom we made sons too are compared gaining the good by grace instead of by natural endowments thirteen which were begotten not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god they who he says have been called by faith in christ unto sonship with god put off the littleness of their own nature and adorned with the grace of him who honoureth them as with a splendid robe mount up unto dignity above nature for no longer are they called children of flesh but rather offspring of god by adoption but note how great guardedness the blessed evangelist used in his words for since he was going to say that those who believe are begotten of god lest any should suppose that they are in truth born of the essence of god the father and arrive at an exact likeness with the only begotten or that of him too is less properly said from the womb before the day star begat i thee and so at length he too should be brought down to the nature of creatures even though he be said to be begotten of god needs does he contrive this additional caution for when he had said that power was given to them from him who is by nature son to become sons of god and had hereby first introduced that which is of adoption and grace without peril does he afterwards add were begotten of god that he might show the greatness of the grace which was conferred on them 
gathering as it were into kinness of nature that which was alien from god the father and raising up the bond to the nobility of its lord by means of his warm love to it what more then will one perchance say or what special have they who believe in christ over israel since he too is said to have been begotten of god as in i begat and exalted sons but they rejected me to this i think one must say first that the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things did not give to the children of israel to have even this in truth but limbed as in type and outline upon them until the time of reformation as it is written wherein they should at length be manifested who should more fitly and truly call god father because the spirit of the only begotten dwells in them for the one had the spirit of bondage to fear the other the spirit of adoption unto liberty whereby we cry abba father therefore the people who should attain unto sonship through faith that is in christ were fore-described in israel as it were in shadow even as we conceive that the circumcision in spirit was fortypified in theirs of old in the flesh and in short all of ours were in them in type besides we say that israel was called into sonship typically through the mediator moses wherefore they were baptized into him too as paul saith in the cloud and in the sea and were refashioned out of idolatry unto the law of bondage the commandment contained in the letter being ministered by angels but they who by faith in christ attain unto sonship with god are baptized into naught originate but into the holy trinity itself through the word as mediator who conjoined to himself things human through the flesh which was united to him being conjoined of nature to the father in that he is by nature god for so mounteth up the bond unto sonship through participation with the in truth son called and so to say raised up to the dignity which is in him by nature wherefore we who have received the regeneration by the spirit through faith are called and are begotten of god but since some in mad peril dare to lie as against the son so against the holy ghost too saying that he is originate and created and to thrust him forth altogether from consubstantiality with god the father come let us again arraying the word of the true faith against their unbridled tongues beget occasions of profit both to ourselves and to our readers for if neither god by nature o sirs nor yet of god is he who is his own spirit and therefore essentially inexistent in him but is other than he and not removed from being connatural with things made how are we who are begotten through him said to be begotten of god for either we shall say that the evangelist certainly lies or if he is true and it be so and not otherwise the spirit will be god and of god by nature of whom we too being accounted worthy to partake through faith to christward are rendered partakers of the divine nature and are said to be begotten of god and are therefore called gods not by grace alone winging our flight to the glory that is above us but as having now god too indwelling and lodging in us according to what is said in the prophet i will dwell in them and walk in them for let them tell us who are filled full with so great unlearning how having the spirit dwelling in us we are according to paul temples of god unless he be god by nature 
for if he be a creature and originate wherefore does god destroy us as defiling the temple of god when we defile the body wherein the spirit indwells having the whole natural property of god the father and likewise of the only begotten and how will the saviour be true in saying if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him and rest in him albeit it is the spirit who dwells in us and through him do we believe that we have the father and the son even as john himself said again in his epistles hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit and how at all will he be called spirit of god if he be not of him and in him by nature and therefore god for if being as those say originate he is the spirit of god there is nothing to hinder the other creatures too from being called spirits of god for this will have already overtaken them in potential if it is at all possible that originate essence should be spirit of god and it were meet in truth to set forth a long discourse upon these things and to satiate more at length overturning the uncounsels of the heretics but having already sufficiently gone through what relates to the holy ghost in the de trinitate we shall therefore forbear to say much yet End of chapter 9, part 2